Hey everyone, my name is Sophia Hossein. I work for the Institute for Local Self-Reliance's Composting for Community Initiative, and I am the Baltimore lead. I know that some of you all were expecting to see Brenda today, but I'm gonna be filling in with her and I'm gonna be talking, um, talking particularly about what we're doing in the Mid-Atlantic region with community composting. And Jessica, it's great to follow up your presentation because I feel like you touched on so many relevant topics. Before I dive in, I just wanna give a big shout out to the momentum that's already going on in California and some of the local businesses that are at the forefront of advocating for community compost. So businesses like LA Compost. Um, and as many of you probably already know, that you guys received a huge grant through the Community Composter Alliance of California to support composting at the community level. So looking forward to seeing that come to life in the next year or so. Um, today, what I'm going to be focusing on is uh, composting, community composting, the what's and why's, different models that we've seen work um, along the Mid-Atlantic, uh, some of the keys to success, and what you can do to support uh, community composting momentum um, in your municipalities. So, as Jessica just talked about, you know, we need to be approaching food waste management from the whole systems approach. But for today, I'm going to be focusing on the small scale and mid scale decentralized um, operations that we have seen succeed. Uh, when we talk about community composting, we're really talking about the not so radical idea that food waste is reclaimed um, as a valuable resource in the neighborhood where it's created. And it's processed into the nutrient rich soil amendment that we call compost or black gold, which really serves to increase the nutritional value of our food, build resilient communities. And you know, there's so many more accessory benefits to composting at the community level. And we've created um, a guide to community composting called Growing Local Fertility, which is available for free on our website. Website. So the beauty of composting at the community scale is that it can look a lot of different ways. There's a lot of flexibility in terms of the kinds of systems you're using and uh, the size of them, depending on what, where you're taking food waste from, how much food waste you're planning on processing, how much labor you have access to, and the site itself. Um, so composting at the community level, like I said, it really serves to create engagement and before before composting systems can really take off at a municipal scale you have to build that rapport with your community and and create the behavior change, right? So that people are recovering their food scraps, you're saving them, they're taking them to their community garden, that community garden is composting them and putting it back in the soil. And the food, something that sticks with me all the time is that if the nutritional content is not there in your soil, it's not there in your food. And so by reclaiming this valuable resource of food waste and putting it back in the soil, you're really serving to create resilient communities across the board. So where does community composting survive and thrive? Um, it can, some of our favorite examples are at community gardens, but they can also be at schools. We've seen wonderful cooperative models that work really well. And um, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time talking about um, some of these models that we have. So at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance, we have a community composting coalition, which is a forum of member-based organizations who are composting as small businesses across the country. And here's a map of where you can see some of our constituents. And I'm gonna dive into a few of them to give you examples of all the different ways this can look. So this is Red Hook Community Farm. They are the biggest uh, urban farm in Brooklyn and they are one of the best community scale composting operations in that they do a great job connecting locally grown food and community engagement while harnessing the power of volunteers. And I'll get more into the volunteers in just, just a couple minutes. Um, this is a uh, small business here in Baltimore called the Baltimore Compost Collective, and they are a local service that collects food scraps from residences in South Baltimore and processes them at the Filbert Street Community Garden in Curtis Bay. And they are a youth empowered food scrap collection program employing youth to give them hands on experience on managing small to mid scale composting operations. Um, this is one of the most popular programs that we have here in Baltimore. It was started by the Office of Sustainability within the Department of Planning, and this is the Farmer's Market Food Scrap Collection Program. Uh, to give you a sense of the scale of this operation, they collect about 700 to 1,000 pounds of food waste per day on the weekend, and about half of that food is recovered as edible um, edible feed for a local hog farm called Pulse Farm, and the other half is composted at another local farm. 
Um, here's another example at a school in New York City. This is an aerated static operation. So it's it's forced air from the bottom. And this is this operation is managed entirely by students. All of the compost created here is applied to the community garden and all of the food that is grown is donated to support food insecurity in the city. Um, this is the Department of Park and Recs in Washington, D.C.'s Community Compost Cooperative Network. And this is a really great example of how the government can participate in composting at the community level. They are a cooperative network of 56 total sites, and they use the model where you have to take a one hour training uh, in order to be able to earn the right to drop off your compost at your local at your local um, network spot. And in return, you commit to volunteering for one hour a month to maintain the system. And just to dive in a little bit further, this is the farm at Kelly Miller, which is one of the sites in the DPR cooperative network. And it's a great example of the partnership, not only between park and recs, but also between public waste and then waste consultant experts at loop closing and the farmers that uh, tend the land at dreaming out loud. And um, Kelly Miller is in um, a food desert and they grow food locally and distribute it um, to uh, organizations in need. And they also process food waste in these two different systems. So you can see the Rydan and also the three bid system in the background. And um, they process food waste not only from their farm, but also from local businesses like restaurants, bakeries, coffee shops, etc. And so in a lot of these pictures, I'm sure you can see there's a lot of community participation. And so we can see that community composting sites operate not only in a very practical sense to process food waste, but also as an outdoor learning opportunity for classrooms, for communities, and really, you know, illustrate the perfect intersection of compost with the rest of the food systems and take a holistic, holistic approach to it. Um, so as I mentioned, harnessing the power of volunteers and community is a really essential part to a lot of operations that we've seen succeed. And to give you an example, um, this is Red Hook Farm in Brooklyn again. They have just under 2,000 volunteers each day, I mean, sorry, <laughs> each day, each year, and they process about 225 tons per year of organic material. So in the ILSR model, when we're training community on composting, we're not only training on the process, but we're also um, trying to impart the skills of compost infrastructure um, construction. So we train people on how to build these systems. And oftentimes we also employ them later down the line when we are ready to bring new sites into the network or um, are opening new um, food scrap collection programs. And what we found is that um, an essential point of education and connection to bring some of this work home is with students and oftentimes it fit. What's that, Rick? One minute. One minute? Oh, well, I'll, I'll give you two. Okay. <laughs> 10 minutes very fast. It is. My yeah. time. I'll talk faster. <laughs> so as I said, volunteers are really important, but what's even more important and integral to your success is going to be trained compost operators. When people think about composting, a lot of the, the, red flags are going to be odors or nuisance like rats or birds who are eating your exposed food waste. And so we really recommend that everybody go through a rigorous training model at uh, the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. We've come up with our Neighborhood Soil Rebuilders Composter Training Program, where we really try to um, outfit our participants with the keys to success, like how to build recipes, how to manage for odors and how to troubleshoot along the way. And in hand in hand with that training comes this community composting done right, our guide to best management practices, which is also available for free on our website. And we encourage you all to check it out. Um, we're also working with um, folks in California to develop a similar model for you all there. Another component to success is really going to be your educational signage. We found that the more signage there is in your sites, the less room there is for error. And so here are some of the templates that we're developing on the bottom. Um, and as Jessica was saying in the last presentation, there's a lot of room for government support. And just to give you an example of this, in Baltimore, um, the Office of Sustainability received a grant. And over the last two years, we've been able to grow our community composting network from three sites to 13 sites. And they operate at food rescue organizations, urban gardens, schools, you name it. Um, and so one of the things that y'all have to look forward to in California is the California Alliance for Community Composting, which just received like a $1.2 million grant to put about 50, 50 community composting sites throughout the state in California and they will be making training available and also um, 
yeah, have online modules for education. So we're really looking forward to that. Always engage with your local government, advocate for progressive um, laws and zoning um, regulations for composting and um, yeah, support, support thorough training. And that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much.